finish, wait. No, actually, we were uh, assuming you get to that point. Yeah, that's about a $215 that. investment. No, I don't get the $500 one. 500 Yeah, because you could actually record and it'll split. I think it's a split. And you have the output for the screen so you can see it live. Yeah, no, I'm getting close to there because Mr. Eric Ward had suggested that last year. Yeah, you be. I want to look tacky. I want to look tacky too. I want to look. I'm just looking look tacky, you know. Yeah, yeah look tacky like you're. You look tacky. You see? Okay. With a rug wrap shirt on. I actually was gonna wear my Rocco's Modern World. You should, but yeah, but I you think should. actually when you drew this is when I had that shirt on. But what I you, had, should, you should do that. You should do that. That way we could play it off like we planned this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't bring it, but. It was like I had to, if I probably had time this morning, because I had to literally throw these clothes in the buy and take my mom to the bank. Let's go with my whole front room full of dirty clothes. We rolling? Yeah. We rolling, rolling, rolling. So, you know, I mean, we just do a little cold opening. We was we was rolling that, that whole time, right? Yeah. All right. Any napkin by Greasy, bro. Yeah, I'll let me go get them. <laughs> yeah, One time. But, you know, we always just chill out. Kick it. Everything has always be everything cool. cool. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't got nothing to do. We have a very. I lie. I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to support the word, man. We all put in. Yeah. Song, that Sonic video has me laughing, dude. You all bought that and stuff. Hey, Pete. We... Yeah, he when he recent hot topic. Eh? No, Hold on, no, no, no. I mean the biggie. Oh, no. He gave it to you, or you bought it? I got, I kind of wanted. They have like a game like during lockdown. Okay. Virtual game. Like, virtual game. Well, what game y'all was playing? We was doing like tasks and stuff like that, right? So whatever he was doing, like he was doing dance in front of the camera, or performing for multiple hours and stuff like that. Came back to work. Oh, you was. That's why you was I saying. Was there for that, but I didn't feel like it was that long. I didn't know you did that. Yeah, I didn't know you was there. That's why you was saying. Was there for that, but I, but I feel like it was there. Like I know you did that. You probably was. Reverend King, what? Yeah. Reverend King is PG's grandfather. Um. Yeah. You know, I was looking at that for the longest, but I was like, I, I Bro, this is this, this who a portrait. No, this this who kept this safe during the whole pandemic, you know, from the gray beyond. Really? Yeah. God, that's his walk past and touch the pain. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> bro, if ain't nobody else had this, a rare part this, bro. All right, now we can. Oh, um, make sure the fine ain't getting too much in the mic, right? Sorry, that. They're breaking all the rules on my, all right. on my camera and on my phone on and all that. No, but this just the cold opening because we were going. How much minutes are we? Here? Two and a half. All right, Two so welcome to everything cool, and this is where we drop the. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. The tourists come over to chill on the beach, but they don't come over the hill where we sleep. We got nightmares and they got fantasies No sanity, it's just insanity My mommy hoping nothing happens to me That's it. So that's now it's the intro. Yeah. We always start with a cold opening. But I lost my iPhone though. <laughs> you just put the phone there. No, that's my next one. Don't be like that other person. But your couch. <laughs> so evil, boy. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have a story for that. <laughs> boy, we have a story for that. No, but that was so like your couch was like, but it's an iPhone 11. <laughs> Let me see the switch. It was an iPhone 5, I think, the last yeah, one. Yeah, like really. someone left their iPhone here, no, no, no. like probably no, years. They left that there intentionally. They wanted y'all to break that. So, okay, I'm buy them the five no more. Y'all gotta right. buy them something. Oh, person's right. fault. All, All right, good about it. Let me get serious. Let me get serious. So, welcome to another episode of Everything Cool. Um, we're drawing. Well, first. You drawing? I, <laughs> I mean, we're joined by. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> but first, let me introduce myself. You know what it is? It's the Negus of Nassau, Saint Antoine, Alexander, Lord Jalen Willard at your service. Alongside with the party of one in the backyard. Yep, one is the loneliest number. Once again, we back to one, back to one. But it is me, P. Giovanni, aka PG13, aka PG13, aka Hidden in Plain Sight, aka your favorite non bay, aka Too Many AKAs. AKA 
Actually, happy old, happy Mario Day, by the way. Yes, happy Mario Day. <laughs> AKA Mario, Mario the Cosplayer. Yeah. Mario today? Yeah, yeah it's, it's Mario March Day. 10th. March 10th. March 10th. So if you write that in lead speak. <laughs> so as of this recording, it's Mario Day. So, you right. know, wow. actually, there's a post on the Homemade Heroes um, pages about, you know, commemorating all the Mars out there, especially our very own. <laughs> Right, wow. <laughs> like Mario of a day. Yes, yep. wow, a day. and it celebrated more right. than International Men's Day. All right, <laughs> oh, cool, boy. Oh man! Cool. So last but not least, let's introduce our I guests would, for the day. I, uh, Ren, aka Renbird, aka Ren and Stimpy, Ernie and Bird equals Renbird, aka Mr. President, aka AKA Mr. Wayne President. Head, aka Ren the Creative, aka Ren the Artist. AKA World's Fastest 2017, AKA Your Girlfriend Favorite Artist. Mm. Nah, that's it. Mm. Hit it in the shop. Yeah. Yeah. Between you, there. there you go. Yeah. I got it. I can put them both. Yeah. Sorry about that. So, no he, I uh, just wanted to try the AKs. I want to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool because, nah, you know. That's random. That's random. Everything cool. So, Normally, before we get into any show, we always have a special segment called the Bayman Word, Phrase, or Saying of the Day. And we normally yeah. give that pleasure to our guest. Oh, crap. I <laughs> saw it on it. it. <laughs> uh, Bayman Word for the day. It's uh, dread. Did we have that already? Y'all had that already? I feel like we should have, but I feel like I, I heard okay, it before, yeah, right? I don't think we had true. We probably had it as like with mother sick dread or something like that. Right. Like that. Uh, so I, dread. Right. Well, no, I come up with a different one there. Y'all go All with right. me. All right. Uh, it's not, but I think it's Gala. It's Gala. Gala, Gala is like the female. Not that, right. Yeah, Gala. Gala. I Gala. think Long Island people would know. Gala, I think, is the female way of saying boy. So I'm saying like boy. I might, I might have messed it up, but I think it's Gala. Mm. Okay, so for international viewers, what is Gala? Gala is like a female, so you. Is it Bala or Gala? Sorry, DeAndre Cartwright, get at me. But um, <laughs> so the whole concept of it is it's actually insulting to call a female boy. So you're supposed to call them um, Gala or Bala. Uh, an equivalent. Whatever. It's the equivalent of boy. Are we still that. insulted by boy, I think? No, we ain't ain't no by we, we can say it in our culture, right. but I didn't, when I went to Long Island, I discovered it. And actually, when I was writing my comic, uh, during the last week, I, had, I went to do some research and found that out. So... The Lucayans in my comic, they don't call them, but they call them that. That's a learning lesson, you know, to teach mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Just jams, mama's cooking all over the <laughs> thing. So, yeah, normally with these audio adventures, we always have riveting guests, and we always like to start in the beginning. In the so, beginning. tell us, like, you know, what was like, or, yeah, how your childhood was, you know, the origin story of Rembert Mortimer. Oh, my whole government name, Jack. <laughs> But uh, to be honest, I humble, grew up in the church, uh, mm-hmm. have a two-parent household. So grew up in Transfiguration Baptist Church. We see a lot of y'all come from Transfiguration. Yes. <laughs> Some of the best people, Sock and Trans, two things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, wow, like, two but, cults uh, now. Now Trans is a new cult, eh? Yeah, that's true. You know what? I didn't want to say one of the oldest Baptist churches in the country and all that, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I grew up in church. I would say pretty much a church boy. Uh, it, it continued straight into college, actually. So... A lot of people talk about partying when they was a kid, you know, going out and all that stuff. I used to be the one, like even in soccer or primary school, when people talk about things they did that weekend, I was like, when you always have time. So me what and my, mean when they have time? my sister and me just realized that our mom like wired us differently. Okay. So, you know, Monday was prayer meeting. Tuesday was something else. Wednesday was Bible study. And you got to go there with your parents uh, because, you know, I should ride home. Thursday <laughs> is like choir practice. Friday was uh, you beating and yeah. Ari and GA. So we're all ambassadors of Christ and uh, girls auxiliary. Then your yes, Saturday, I was a baseball player too. So during the week, I also had to go to baseball practice. Uh-huh. So, so from I was in side grade, like four, five, and six, I was on national teams going off with Andre Wood and, and Jeff Rogers. and Not Jeff Rogers, um, Andre Wood and other people. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so from I was a young age, I was playing baseball. Also in Baptist League, I was playing baseball and volleyball and basketball at a young age right so you're talking about you're always active on a saturday i get up you have to do chores until like 10 then you got to go to jbl and play baseball after that you're switching your clothes to go to choir practice after choir practice you got to stay because mommy of her choir practice so you're still chilling in the youth center then sunday come and you got to sing in the choir and do a lot and of course i was playing piano at the time too so you're talking about weekends never exist always in church 
Um, never had my first real girlfriend till 21, you know, kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, right in the same boat, but I didn't have an active, like, no, I, I was like active, that. like, right mm-hmm. now in, in my life because I stopped going, I stopped ministering full time in mm-hmm. church at 21, right? When I got my first job at Atlanta's. So I actually sat down with Pastor Thompson and I explained to him, like, I love the church. I know you always give you a little stipend at the end for assistant, but. You know, I got to make money to be something in life. Yeah. yeah. You know, I finished college, so I went to get a job in a hotel. The requirement for where I was at, which is housekeeping. And when I was a manager, Trini, was that you can't have Sundays off. So I would then <laughs> um, exit the church, uh, still get active in like vacation Bible school, sometimes be a host, be a character. Um, but I wasn't really as active. So even growing up in church, pantomime ministry, I was a choir director. I was, uh, of course, involved in Royal Ambassadors for Christ, leading behind the scenes while still being in Junior Achievement, Achievers Association, while still uh, being active, forming my own life. So literally from my mommy foundation, so learning all the kind of talents and keeping busy, I've always been somebody who always busy. Like right now, people look at my schedule and be like, when do you find time? I say, but you already see all this time. <laughs> like I just binge watch Waku again. For no reason. Like, mm-hmm. I have time on my schedule. Yeah. No, I think, um, and I always, me and my cousin, and many people talk about this. It's like, your parent, well, I wasn't fortunate to have a, a and my child to have an active life where I got to do so many different things and express myself in a bunch of ways. I was mm-hmm. home all the time. But, like, you know, just being sheltered like that. Mm-hmm. But um, I think a lot of, parent and i always would say and whenever i get kids they're gonna have an active life from not wait until high no, school you hope you hope yeah yeah don't set yourself up that's like me saying but when my <laughs> son got me be honest that you come up and just be like daddy i don't do engineering but right. come out but you don't slap you <laughs> no Dude, you, you know what yeah but, draw today in this yeah, house. yeah no but not just no just them yeah, having yeah, an active yeah. life just in general not waiting oh okay you have to stay home and do school mm-hmm. but and then when you get to high school then you will come have this active life as i said it because then you would realize how time effective you have to be like okay this is this time this is this time okay i could take this hour two hours to do this then move it's on it's chaotic too bro like i want you to feel like I everything know. was good like yeah, I, yeah. I developed migraines at a very early age. I couldn't take mommy is a very loud woman, right? Yeah. So I can I couldn't take noise and I couldn't take light. So imagine my mom always talking on the phone because she's a unionist. So she always talking on the phone mm-hmm. about the unionist stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Then our daddy had us in this ritual for me as young. So daddy wakes us up like 4 30 every morning to do devotions. Wow. Mm-hmm. Every morning. So if you fall asleep doing devotions and it's time to say that I have a father. He's knocking and say, well, you're fall asleep. Let's start over. Oh, no. Psalm chapter one. <laughs> like, oh, shoot. Like, so um, I, I wouldn't, like, I I develop a lot of, like, sleeping habits and stuff. Like, I sleep in cars. When mm. I was a baby, though, that's just a relaxing thing. But mm. it went straight into my adulthood. So, like, most of my accidents have been in life. It wasn't because I was drunk or high or something like that. It's literally because I was falling asleep. asleep. Like, oh, wow. Mm. So, uh, and then these straight into high school, I like, started doing this thing where, I started coffee early, but I also spontaneously would get tired and fall asleep. So kind of like I had to go get medically checked out. And they said to summarize it, I don't know what it's called, but my body needs more energy and I wasn't taking enough vitamin B. Mm. So when I was young, I used to have a lot of vitamin, which filled with vitamin B, so it never used to show. Yeah. So I could have do all the sports and be athletic and all that stuff. When right. I get older, doing coffee, which of course takes away from your potassium and some of your energy. Mm. And then you don't get no vitamin B. So it's like my brain was giving my body nutrients. So what it costs is just me to have the random drops here. Mm, yeah, in yeah. class and different stuff in cars. I, like I would be on the bus going home mm. and literally miss my bus stop twice. Like I'll say, okay, I'm coming off in like 10 minutes. Literally when I get up the bus driver, like, um, so you didn't End ride line, around for right. like two hours. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> so yeah. But, like, so they didn't just recommend maybe you just need more rest. Uh, I, to this day, and this like the thing yeah. about parents, right? Yeah. So I have a strict mom and she literally is always say, oh, you won't work hard enough or you lazy. You wear everything I doing? Yeah. But my <laughs> yeah. mom, to this day, mommy would be like, oh, when I was your age, I was doing as much as you. Now I hold her. I tell her, no, you wasn't. Yeah. You was never as busy, busy as me. At one point when I was COVID president and involved a couple other stuff, I was traveling like twice a month and she was traveling twice a month. Mm. And then a year later, when I started doing international art, I was traveling like four times a month. And she's like, boy, why are you always going? 
I say, so now you can admit yeah. that I actually busier than you. Right. Mm. So yeah, but that's a uh, real talk. It come up to my upbringing, who I was under. You know, I from the Sands family, we very tight knit, but I'm also more and more. So a lot of family values, a lot of family centric. And so Sunday right after church, family dinners, you chilling by family. Like there's rarely any time for you to say slack off or do something. It's just right. always go good. So you because like when I first encountered you. So we we fast forward okay high school into college. Mm-hmm. Um, I started UB um, fall twenty ten, and then like when I first encountered you, you always seemed like the model student. Where basically yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I so, was, man. I uh, not to cut you off, but I honestly, mm-hmm. I had that experience. That's that's what I was doing in my job right now, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm also PR branding specialist for UB, but like when I had work, I could connect with students because I be real. So I met a student who got in trouble with the law and I was like, come sit down, but let me tell you, we'll get in trouble with the law. And I tell him about my court cases and all that. And he was like, boy, I'd never believe you'd be into that. You know, you meet students who go on stuff, challenging, trying to date, trying to find themselves, failing the course, and you could get them real advice. You know, even the students who be like, well, I don't feel like college for me. I could get them advice that I got in college or I read. So the book Think Big by Ben Carson, mm-hmm. one of the chapters I fell in love with because I didn't uh, disconnect him back in high school, but I'll get there later. But I really couldn't read until grade 10. I used to see the words mm. and try to play it off and try to sound like everybody. And then I used to do, like, y'all ever see that interview with Vantasia reading, but then she starts saying stuff that she think on the paper, but they ain't really on the paper. Oh, um, I never seen that. Yeah. No, so I, I, had a, I had a degree of that too. I used to uh. imaginary read. So I like, I want to read as fast as everybody and sound like everybody. So I'd be like, da 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 da. And I saying words that ain't really on the paper. So like, mm. the teacher used to stop me and be like, Re- read the words on them <laughs> and i was like but i don't sound like them though right right so i literally it was like in grade 10 i got tears mm. uh, from people who i i think was kind of cool but they literally make it fun of me i had to say the word negligible mm. um and how my phonetic skills work is i can't pronounce i have no understanding of pronouncing long and and short and all that stuff all these rules they taught you as a kid mm. meh, missed it mm. right mm. like in primary school i was a part of the recorder group choir Always leaving, going on field trips. I never was in class. And I can do it straight into college. I got my degree. I still remember. Shout out to Katira Bob. Uh, <laughs> my, my higher level psychology class did a petition stating that I have to come to class and I have to give feedback in order to pass the class. <laughs> they petitioned for you Hold to on, come to the class. Students, <laughs> the students, the students, <laughs> the teacher, Dr. Hutchison, shout out to her. She used to bust me with pennies to sleep in a class. But um, and yeah. also the dean agreed that I had to show up to class and I had to open up to finish my degree okay so wow. hold on, why said, did they but so you just would just turn in the work oh no i once i look at that curriculum and they say 10 20 percent for attendance well leaving this class <laughs> to the b yeah. i used to get all the a's and best grades i could leave the class to the b i never wow. used to show up that's how i was so busy with covers i used to be like in meetings and committees and doing stuff and people would be like boy like you was a student too why don't like go to class i'd be like <laughs> Oh, so I see. The petition was basically to say, Cobus, give this man some time to come no, to class. No, the petition was to say, Redbird, oh. come to class. And oh, so they used, yeah. stuff oh, so it was to force you to come to class. Right. I came to class, but I used to sleep in class. Right. And you say Katuris had that? Katuris <laughs> one of them, baby. She's, a, she's one of the eight, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so but all I'm saying is that Lena lesson. going to cl- mm-hmm. school together, is he? He's schoolmates. Yeah, That's man. Katuris dope. It was just yeah. uh, the lesson I got from Ben Carson was just understand your learning style, baby. Like, from I understood that one, I can't read as quickly as people, right? So the time allocated to go to class, if I ain't joking around, I actually in the library secretly reading the textbook because I read slower than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, when people in class for three hours, I'm in the textbook trying to read the chapter. I also learned that once you learn your lecture style, you know how to pass the class. So if I have a lecturer who talks, big one. But their notes is what they grade you on. I need to come to class ahead of these notes. And they have habits of this will be on the test. This will be on the quiz. They will repeat some point twice. Whenever they repeat it twice, this could be on something. <laughs> Little hints I learned. So I actually, before I even finished my psychology degree, I was using psychology. I was analyzing people to figure out life. Mm. So the same, the same thing with uh, reading. I would, but that's how bad I was at reading. I would count the seats because I figured out my English teachers, right? They used to make <laughs> you read and sock. Mm. Bless their soul. So I used to <laughs> count the seats. And always it was like seat number 26, 27, right? So the room went like this. And mm. she used to pick it like this. Mm. So if I always come to class 10 minutes before everybody, I used to run from PE sometimes too, to sit way on the side of the class so I never get used to read. 
Wow. But who? Literally, but that's how. That like, sounds like a portion of anxiety, do it. It was anxiety. It right. was a little bit of um, nervousness, embarrassment. Mm-hmm. And literally, that one day when the teacher made me read, it's because she decided she's watching me too. So she switched the order. <laughs> she flipped the script, my So dude. sometimes I wouldn't go on the exact end. In case she did that, I'd say, let me just go like close to it to make it look random, right? Right. But literally, she saw it and she picked me to read. The word was negligible. I couldn't say it. I say negligible. Blah, 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 blah. Because I heard somebody say it, but I didn't hear them too good. And I can't mm. pronounce it. So I had to go on memory about what I think different parts of this is. So how my learning works. So you could have read, but you just couldn't pronounce. Read. Think of lettuce as a picture. Okay. If you yeah. showed me this, right? And you said, this is a bottle. Uh-huh. And you show me the word bottle. I remember that the combination of this picture, which is bottle, which is the picture bottle, mm. the words equals to this, which is the bottle. Which I know what this is. Right. But if you tell me the spell bottle, you don't remember. The picture, remember, is like this. So it's probably B O B. And then it's either T or L. No, real talk. It happened in real time. I can't remember. Like, I would have the focus and then realize that, okay, bottle. But what is ball? How do you spell ball? Ball is B A L L. But that So you ever got ball. like a SAS for it? Why this intriguing for me? Because I had a learning disability, almost something similar to you and. Had these manic processes, especially in college, to where like the whole learning your professor style. Like for me, not to cut you off, for me, no, um, I use I took a whole year of art history, mm-hmm. and I learned the teacher style. Like she write all the notes before class and then talk. So while I come to class, write all the notes, go fall asleep in the class, go home. Take the notes because I was like, I can't, I'm, I'm a visual learner. Mm-hmm. So I, what I would do is make a cheat sheet. So I'll go online, take her notes, and then go research the stuff again and then pair it and then understand the See, information. See, you want the internet, yeah, encyclopedias back in my day. You know, no internet. Yeah. So, Come but, on. no, but this is when I was in but college. It, the lesson, yeah, the yeah. Two, two of us did it. You have to learn how you learn. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the first thing they teach in Council in 100. Learn how you learn yeah. and finish college. So Ben Carson did the same thing. He was applying for his MD. He mm. was in the class. He was failing. He go in the class, listen to the lecture. He failed. And he discovered that if he go to the library and read the chapters, he got better grades. Mm. So he started, people say, why are you in class? He started to do what works for him. Right. And so he became the first black neo, um, uh, neopath surgeon to separate the two twins and all that, mm. right? Gifted hands. But I'm just saying, like, a key part of this life is you're defining your pathway, by, like how yeah. you do it. Yeah. And no matter what people do, it stick to that pathway. Like, mm. I'm a living proof that if you find, I just talked to my boy, Jamal Allen, and literally it's like, if you look at our lifestyles as artists, all of us just found a pathway, a thing that we love, and just focused on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Despite people telling you, oh, have a backup plan, have a plan B, don't do this, don't do that. Mm. No way, stick to it yeah. long enough and doors open. I met you also at um when I was at Nod. I drew yeah. for Nod for five to six years, bro. I think four, no, four to five years. Consistently, three mm. times a month, coming down on Fridays, meeting guests, meeting Bahamians, seeing who leaving from work, sneaking out from Atlanta to say, oh, I sick. I catch so much of my employees in Nod, mm. leaving the island saying they sick, and I'd be like, well, you ain't sick. You want right. to draw it? <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> but I'm saying like that opportunity was only afforded because I stick with it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I give a lot of credit to my good friend, Willard Cunningham. Willard saw my talent, you know. I wasn't introduced to the event. So you was first. doing caricatures? So I, I have t- drawn caricatures all my life. Okay. When I was a baby. My daddy was an artist. Okay. But my daddy, you know, respectfully felt, you know, money and art went the way of, uh, he worked for BTVI. Mm. So he was doing um, boat repair and engine repairs and stuff like that. Mm. So he kind of came to me when I was like in high school, no, like in college. I was about 19 and I was drawing, starting to get some money for it. And he was like, why well, don't go find a real trade? Does he know trade? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, with my disability, I said, well, let's define what is a trade. What is a trade in your explanation? Um, and he said, oh, a trade is when you use your hand to get money. I said, so how much you just get for fixing this boat engine? He said, well, I just get $50 an hour. I said, well, I just get $75 an hour. Well, <laughs> so that's my trade. <laughs> right. Technically. Just like that. So, so yeah, so that's like anybody mm. who really, really knows me know I, I think different because I literally was taught different. I wasn't growing up the same like you. Like the reason why I could do all these different functions in all these companies mm. is because that's my norm. But mm. I don't know what it is to just sit there and buy a board. 
like I ain't gonna lie. I recently said I bought. I started a masters. I don't mm. say bought too long. Like I literally was like, wait, I actually have like an additional eight hours every day. Mm. Um, let me go do something, right? Let me apply for this masters. Boom. I ain't bought no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I lie. I lie. I actually still love <laughs> bought. <laughs> All right. So n- this is a get too far. Let's get back yeah, on yeah. track a little bit. So okay. So college days. So. You the modest citizen like uh you be spend about approximately like five years. So mm. is like going from like my point no, of view no, seeing cool. like because I knew you spent probably like a year at UB before I went to Atlanta to do my uh right. BFA. So so when people saw you and hear you, they were always like, okay, remember is the model student. This was like high time when you was it, trying it's to run different opinions. But yeah, yeah, like, I know, I know. Because obviously a later it's on high a- energy mm-hmm. run, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't called Ren back then. It was Renbert. Yeah. High energy Renbert is somebody who, if you're amongst people, yeah. he could shine. He could be a leader. He uh-huh. could be out there. Mm-hmm. He could be loud. That yeah. was just me. That's before all the leadership. I went on leadership retreats, all that. Mm-hmm. I just found out that that's me. Mm-hmm. So I was always kind of shy and reserved in high school. So college was like that reset button mm-hmm. where I could redefine myself. And I did that. So I started to meet friends, people. I started to join organizations. Um, emerging leaders of the College of the Bahamas. I joined Key Club, not Key Club, um, cool. Golden Key, okay. National Society of Leadership and Success. Yeah. I started to join committees. Of course, I joined SGA. So mm-hmm. I started to learn that like I was a leader. I didn't never in my life. Like, what prompted you to that? Because ne- my cousin, my uncle, like, Regina mm-hmm. Hunt, she said, okay. <laughs> now Regina, we Regina saw me underneath what we used to call Cami Tree. So the tree right next to the cow. Mm. Every yeah, every freshman used to call it something different. So the sock people we call it chemistry tree because uh, one of our boys can be used to sit there. <laughs> but uh, literally, Gina saw me there chilling, and she was like, "Why you don't get active for that SGA?" And I saw them, you know, blue blazers, their little khaki pants walking. I was like, "The mob." <laughs> 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 but at the same time, she was like, "We have a position free for treasurer. You know, you was in junior achievement, you was good at sales. Maybe you would come in and you make a difference." So at the time, um, the president was Perry Newton, Pastor Perry Newton. God bless his soul. Because everything he taught me in, in, on this leadership came out to bite me mm-hmm. later in my life, right? So Perry was an older man, always reserved. Even to this day, the same fights they're fighting is things Perry tell me. I got to fight for the rest of my life. Right. No matter how creative you is or fast or how much you want to be out there and passionate you is, slow down, Renbert. You got to wait for process years. And I used to be like, baby, we only have a year in this office. Let's do these things now. Well, let's get the proper protocol to be passed. Proper protocol takes a year to do. <laughs> so we basically nine. He said, like, yeah, but that's how the world works. So mm-hmm. Perry gave me a lot of advice. Um, I became rebellious, you know, working under a 60-year-old man and you're 19 and you have so much ideas and it's like, calm down. So the thing I did, the first time I ever played politics, actually, is me and my boy Adrian, Adrian Wagus. We wanted yeah, to I know. I, I was in this film where he did around that time. Dope, man. So yeah. me and Adrian, we wanted to go to American Student Government Association. A trip that, again, would change my life, right? And we knew mm-hmm. that we had the budget. The Student Affairs VP at the time, Colin Major, was like, the budget there, like, y'all could travel. This is a learning experience. This could change. This good for y'all. So we had the Student Affairs sign in. You know, people was helping us, but we needed the president signature. By the time we get a signature... The clause was that the VP had to come and the Senate speaker had to come, which was fine. So we got to go on the trip. That singing trip would like begin me understanding how much my leadership style or who I am even goes beyond these shores. Because like you meeting people around the world, other student government association people, you talking about constitutions, you realizing that although you used to college at the Bahamas, our constitution that we had with COB was far beyond all these like tip top schools. These schools people trying to leave the Bahamas to go to, our student government association was better or in a better position than them. And I was like, whoa. So when I came back, it was a degree of we doing a lot of stuff right. And we using our mantle to teach other people how to run their script a little better. So when I came back, that's when I went from Churchill, becoming the first illegal operating tuck shop operator on the campus, <laughs> selling art parties out the sub. Um, okay, so that was your idea. That was illegally my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I got personal letters from President Jane Harder saying, Renbert, we hear you are selling parties. Stop it. You need a health certificate. Like, yeah, man, that's five dollars, man. We get that. We get that health certificate. But I was hustling, mate. It was like every morning, right. five o'clock, buy the parties, put them in there. We had a sign-in, sign-in system. So every student who worked, they got 10% or whatever sold in the store whenever they stayed there. Mm-hmm. And we paid them out. 
and then we liquidated it from that. Um, Waylon took over then. Uh, Malcolm took over and then it shut down. But we was the first illegal. Yeah, because I used to go there like in the little corridor next to where the, where the sub is yeah, and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. like, you know. So, yeah, it was fun running it. Uh, from that, of course, the wellness center started selling parties. Yeah, I block started selling parties. But yeah, to be a part of the team and my friends who ran that and be empowered at such a young age and be able to make your own money, that would have been the, the start, man. So, Going straight into there, I guess it leads up on that leadership, Cobus, all that stuff. Was I like having the college experience? Other people's having no. I still had drop shares. So even though I was chilling with my friends mm-hmm. and they drinking, if I had one drink, I go on. I sleep in. Mm-hmm. Like I be in the parties with my friends, everybody dancing, having fun. Mm-hmm. I sleep in on the couch. Mm-hmm. I sleep on dirty couches. That's how tired I be, right? <laughs> so I I was working hard and partying hard, and I feel like I had my ideal college experience at college environment. Like after class, going to beaches, chilling with your friends. If anybody know our time was four local time, so yeah, I was in college when they introduced four local. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, people yeah. used to be drinking on yeah. campus and being faded. No, they say students still is. I no, I know. I ain't said something to record. But yeah, I was uh, a part of a chapter where you know security wasn't as strict as it is. We didn't have campus Oh police. man, uh, <laughs> you could have throw parties and policies wasn't in place and Cobus presidents or Cobus itself was known for parties. Yeah. So we use parties to connect with the students so we could get them to come to student assemblies to change stuff to better the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, it was fun, you know, as a council member too, but of course became infamous because they got locked up. So, and right yeah. there, who we're going to take a quick commercial <laughs> break because they're about to get very interesting. I really want to talk about that security part too, mm-hmm. but we could be right back after these messages. Just didn't read. I just made notes because me redoing it helping me to learn it. And it's like, okay, now nah, well, that's also why I don't read. Like now that I can read, yeah. I don't read as much because when I read, I retain everything. Oh. I retain everything. So when I read, I do it for understanding or using that information yeah. later. So I can't just read some just because you want to read it. That's a waste of time. Mm. I think I, I'm like that too because it's like. Uh, and people always be like, how you know all these little facts and da 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 Because when I read it, if I see something in the movie, I'm going to stop the movie and go research it mm. right quick and then go start it again. Because now I, I want to understand it. And it's like... That's like... Mm. I can even show you that. I mean, it ain't really a secret, but that's literally how I do social media. Mm. Like, you know, people who tweet and all that. I don't need to do that. I literally get more engaged with my uh, client's page because I actively post and I watch their posts and I take note of what people say and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm retaining information. I'm retaining uh, retaining trends or information people talk about or what's working and what's not working. Then I process and I do what's going to work. Yeah. So a part of that, like, is for instance, this whole sticker thing, right? Uh-huh. I now use stickers because I can no longer not use stickers. I have to use stickers to connect. Stickers on the a story or stickers? On, on WhatsApp. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I, I now, yeah. well, that'll be G, G, GIFs and stories, but I have to use them mm. to connect with my populace. Do I want to use them? No. Will I go on record and tell everybody I miss the days of semicolons and just half of brackets and stuff? Mm. Yes, I do. I'm that old, right? Mm. <laughs> Give me a pay phone with a quarter. I am happy. But now we're in an era that people don't even say what they're actually saying no more. They just use an emoji. They use emojis and stickers and expressions. Gifs. So it's like, if you meet the, uh, not the touch, authorness, right? But that's why I wrote my book too, my second book. But if you look at the average relationship when you get to even a girl, can you really have a conversation? No, you have to convey it through using images and emojis. Right? And then the worst part is people talk all day, use these stickers all day. How you doing all that? What all going on? Chris Rock said it best, but in tambourine, back in the day, his daddy used to leave home, go to work, work hard, come back, and then get updated from his wife what happened today. Man. She... Had her husband away. He going to work. She know what he doing. When he come back, she could be like, I do this. I clean. I put up the children. They actually had something to talk about. But yeah. 
today we stay on the person that we in a relationship from they go to work hey how you doing you reach the work call me during the day of work hey you want to text me today you okay they yeah. at work you know they yeah. doing work yeah. you want to text me you want to check up on me it's lunch time it's my lunch time why you don't call me i think that's why people share like the jokes and memes often it's just no yeah okay like yeah we having a conversation but there's something we can laugh over but even something. that is get hurtful when they put something in their status and you don't see it <laughs> seriously this week so you right. so busy today you couldn't look at my status mm -hmm. and i put that there for you or the people who do this call your phone and be like hey you don't see i sent you a message today yeah what is yeah. it go thing. read the message yeah like, but i, I saw, on the phone so with you, would you right you now tell just tell me what, what it, it is go read it <laughs> click <laughs> My whole thing is we have all these habits from a sociological point of view, right? All these are psychological and sociological, but mm. we have all these habits that I watch in my industry, social media that I hate. Like I literally work for social media and I tell people who are using their phone, take a break. That's why I turn my phone off. Like, it's like, you know, me manage my brain. Like I have a set time, like two o'clock every day. Mm. I put my phone on like work mode or airplane mode. I don't cut it back on until like six. Like COVID-19, like, everybody was on their phone all the time. They they were destroyed. All this information, bad and good, what is true, what is fake. Mm, nah. I was like, how about this, bro? Turn the phone off. Turn the phone off and keep to the basic rules of this. Wash your hand. Mm -hmm. right. Sanitize your stations. Right. Mm. Keep from anybody who looking sick, keep away from them. Mm. And even if you don't come in their presence, wear a mask. These rules were so simple. And then you go on social media and you see all the parties getting up and all the people mm -hmm. partying and you realize, oh, that's why you're spreading. Yeah. Because I might be listening to the rules, but they like. Not listening to the rules yeah. or you going down. There are people who understand the algorithm of these apps where they send you down a wormhole because. Don't even, yeah. Mm -hmm. The algorithms, Real. the analytics, all that stuff is what I have to study and report on. And I hate it because it changes so frequently. Literally one, yeah. one I think January, right after the blackout, actually. You got some of the lowest social media reach and impressions ever. Yeah. Then the next one, it was like it was double. Cause now the new algorithm had to make up for what they do to you. And all of a sudden, like on UB page, we was losing people every month. All of a sudden, after the new algorithm, we gained 93 followers. Yeah. And then also when they started shifting to more, like I see, like I tell people for Instagram is more, you, you post a real stories and oh, characters. Oh, reels now for sure. If yeah. you have mm -hmm. a regular post, you don't get nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real stories. And if you're going to make a regular post, make it a carousel, so multiple images and things like that. Listen, like, oh, yeah. my God. I, I want to talk about it. Like, somebody shares an account with me, a coworker, right? Yeah. And the other day, something happened, and they post literally 20 pictures back to back on the Not same day. And I was like, oh, my God. Mm, no. You just made all the hard work I do on behind the scenes with this algorithm. Just for you doing that, Instagram is going to be like, obviously, they don't know the rules because mm -hmm. you're supposed to post 10 per post yeah instead mm -hmm. of spreading it over mm -hmm. you sort of make people swipe so they can stay on the post Posting longer right yeah to get more engagement but it's like oh, obviously this person don't know the rules wait when i look at the numbers them i was like wow hmm. it's like they literally is like yeah let's reset your account because you're being stupid today yeah. yeah and then you know times and stuff but uh yeah that that leads into the rebellion part of me right and yeah so the rebellion the, the, actually no, i want to talk about the security first cut all that out <laughs> let's go back to this no we, we, we can keep that in so before I left UB. What you think happened that day? Hell, tell day? me the story Hold you on, know. Which, the which day, day? The, when I got in. The, I got, the day. Oh, no. The I day. think the this day. is what I think later because yeah. when that happened that day, I was ready in Atlanta seeing it. Oh. Alive, okay. right? no, but amazing. what you wear happened? Okay. So, well, let me backpedal where I think how this all connect, right? All right. All right. So, a couple of months before, like November 2011, because this happened like early 2012, right? Yeah, my birthday. Yeah. February mm -hmm. February second. Twenty twelve. Twenty eleven. No. Nope. I was due to graduate twenty eleven. Because I graduated twenty twelve. So I was due to graduate twenty eleven. Why I feel like I was away. Was it? No, you're you right. You're right. It was twenty twelve. Yeah, February because I was in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So timeline wise, October twenty eleven. Yeah. Or uh, November twenty eleven. I on campus. A lot of people started complaining about how aggressive the security be. Right. And then it was a situation when several leading up to mine. Yeah, yeah, but the one that stand up to me, it was a situation <laughs> right. one morning where the students start fighting back to security and right. they called the police. Right. That morning I was filming some part of it and uh, had a security officer confiscated my camera. 
Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, the lead, blah, blah, blah. So I had to walk. He took my, no, he took my ID and I had to go all the way to their head office across mm-hmm. the street by KFC mm-hmm. to go get it back. And he was like, oh. Because you don't I, got no rights. Right. Yeah. Oh, da, da, da. Well, come to find out, that's my family member. And I was like, if I ever meet him, even this years later, I can give him a piece of my mind about that. Yeah, well, that so, so <laughs> like, you know, but I mean, yeah. So like, and then um shout out levette i actually have a video of like we was mm. we was in production class together yeah, and then we did the that. eng of the whole student assembly and i remember i think levette was saying about how the like, security guards be hitting on her and da 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 mm. so i felt like that tension was bubbling from then so i left mm. i in Atlanta chilling on twitter da da da, da. and then that's when i see this the videos the situation for bahamas press mm. so initially when i saw it i was like I know these dudes just being aggressive again because mm. I seen it in front of my face mm. live. They beating up students. So I'm like, this is just another situation. Mm. And then it was like, you know, people were saying, oh, he was drunk, blah, 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 blah this, that, and that. Mm. And then from afar, I just see the whole situation play it out. In fact, I was telling PG, I think I had to start taking some writing courses around there. And I was, I think me and you had conversed small talk Might over have, the internet i i developed yeah. a little bit of a protective thing around then yeah so i actually mm-hmm. like forgot people's names and forgot people for about two years yeah mm-hmm. so we I went be- into like a state of depression for two years after. yeah so like because i started even i was like i was so inspired by the story i started mm-hmm. sort of writing skeletons of the story and then i was like when i met you like a couple years ago, i was like when i finally like get it more fleshed out it's like i can before i even know i can bring it to you and like get your blood, like let you go through it, get your blessing. Yeah, I mean, it can't come on no more because they're working for you. You <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, right. yeah. But, you know, but just the whole thing, but just for the audience. Yeah. Take them uh, through so whole the, fun, the best version of the story I heard, because I love this one, <laughs> is that I went over to Kirkies and I got like, I oh, guess if flat. they clip this out, they can say, oh, see, he admitted, right? Yeah. But whatever. Social media. <laughs> but literally, they was like, boy, Renbert, we hear you going over to Kirky. And you get one, two NSC, and you pop them. He was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then you come out the campus, and he was like, boy, F this and F that, and like this, this and all this, right? Uh, and then they record you, boy, because you know you was cursing a lot. Yeah. And then they say, boy, security is trying to deal with you, and you run to the library like, I can tell everybody. You can touch me. Baby, and I heard that story in all my depression, I laughed hard. I was crying. Because I was like, but that's a way better story than the truth. <laughs> yeah, because you no, know, because from the angle it was like, bro, students, da 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 da, like you know, um, yeah. I guess we'll see you be blah, a, blah, blah, and, yeah. and shout out to a lot of people who are active in it, but like yeah. there's so much players in the, on that night and on my life. So much people mm. for the story. I actually wrote a book called How to Stomp a Rat. Only five people like Dr. Um sorry, Miss Blackwell, um, or Nastro. Ernie, a good friend, mm-hmm. uh, DeAndra Cartwright. Mm. Uh, a few people actually read it, mm. but I can't publish it. I can't put it out there. Mm. It, it conflicts with my current job, right? Mm. But Would this be like a later release? It was like a comedy. Remember when I, I used to do comics on campus yeah. with Mickey mm-hmm. the Rat? Yeah. Right. So the comics that. was ways of me letting out some of that steam about all the stuff I learned now that I'm president. And this side is like, People have sit in this position and allowed this to go on and nobody's speaking up. Now, I also had learned to tailor down some of my passion. So mm. the comics became a release. So on the night of, um, that day was so funny. So I can't never say where I was before. I can say it now. The time didn't go on. So <laughs> I actually had mm. class before the whole thing. Okay. Mm. So imagine I went to class. That day was my birthday. There's three things that impacted, four things that impacted my case. One, there was a campus party, pajama party, uh-huh. that a next student was throwing that had pictures of vaginas on their flyer. So what? that that was this that was all over campus. So I had to go to an early morning meeting with security and student affairs, and everybody asked the question, why are because I had class off property somewhere too for my mm-hmm. internship at St. Andrews. Mm-hmm. But when I came back, there's like this whole issue and I saw the emails, Renbert, the flyers are everywhere and they want to know how the flyers got up and who put these flyers up with the vagina and they saying it's our pajama party because we were throwing a pajama party too. Mm-hmm. So imagine the whole day they arguing about pajama right. party. When I come on campus, I am wearing pajamas. <laughs> so they was like, this your party? Right. And I was like, no, it's not. I know the student who put this up. 
they came to me asking for Cobra sisters. I said, hell no. Right. You know what? He put no pictures like that. And honestly, I know you. I know what you're trying to do with this party. I won't be a part of that. I already talked to this. How do you, so how do you have an, uh, that Bro, type of party on you gotta campus? Learn, you got to learn politics. So okay. he was denied from campus. But what he did was he took his $50 prints and he got it anyway. And he put them up throughout campus that night. No, but you say the party was on campus? Yeah. He his was, party? His party, he wanted to throw it in the sub. And he couldn't because we were throwing a party in the club, in the sub. So when he had his party? He was promoting it to have it somewhere else. It okay, didn't okay. matter. The whole thing is he wanted people to come to his right. party. All right. <laughs> so th- this is important because all this literally paid into my, my court case, right? Mm. So I dealt with that the night before. I was like, dude, ain't nobody supporting that. Stop it, right? So before I came on campus, they had created the story that I am throwing the party. That's my party. Mm-hmm. And that the flyers everywhere. So they came to me um, at the time. Um, what her name is? Jillian Gray. Yeah. She was my PR assistant, right? Yeah. And Jillian came to me and, and it was uh, Peter Mitchell. And they was like, oh, what we could do with these flyers? Now, at this point, my leadership, I'm stressed and I'm very direct. And also a little bit of a, I'll say, arrogant AO, right? Mm-hmm. So literally, I'm a smarty some days. And that was one of the days I chose to be it. Because it's the day before my birthday. I was like, well, you all stress me. Right. So I literally was like, hey, if there are flyers everywhere and they are not stomped by the university, means that we didn't approve them, why don't we just take them down? <laughs> and I walked off. Boy, I regret doing that. So <laughs> some people took that as, um, sorry for calling Jillian Niam and all that. But she was... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't supposed to call people names, but right. it's too late. Like the story yeah. already out there, right? right, right. Mm. So that was the first thing that happened. And at the same time, one of my boys came to give me a bottle of wine. The, again, an important fact in my gun. <laughs> so the bottle of wine touched Which my turned hand. Into two yeah. Hennessy. I was literally suspended <laughs> for ten months because by UB's rules and regulations, if you are caught in possession of alcohol, you are suspended. Mm. Mm. If students knew that, right? If you just <laughs> yeah, caught so with right? possession of alcohol, right? you don't have to drink it. Yeah, just right. because it was that identifiable of. bottle of wine. And then, of course, two people verified that they saw me mm. with this bottle of wine. That is the foundations of why I got suspended. It had mm-hmm. nothing to do with drinking. Okay. Now, they could suggest that I drank it and I had added to it. But then my thing, my counter argument to that when I went into council was, um, so I drank it in class because what you all need to understand is I had a two hour class before this. Mm-hmm. So in between the class and that was a 10 minute break mm-hmm. where I went up to the sub, right? And I looked around and none of my friends was there. So it's my day before my birthday. I have friends, you know, people who I could trust. Uh-huh. Nobody in the sub. It's only two people. Lukisha card, right? April. Um, um, oh, Frank. Anyway. <laughs> it's Indians. Right. so literally and i could still remember it but i was singing gospel songs with them so i was a choir boy and next thing you know security boss in hmm. and there was uh a higher end letter that was sent i was cc'd in it stating that there are no events on campus and i told security i know let's go back in time mm. two o'clock during the two to four break I embarrassed myself and became the most hated person on campus. Why? Security had me go on stage from two to four and announce that there'd be no events on campus that night. Again, uh, that, that the day. person being mm-hmm. accused of throwing party at yeah. two o'clock on record in front of a hundred students canceled all parties on property. Hmm. So how y'all could accuse hmm. me of throwing parties if y'all told me at two o'clock by the man of security and the president to cancel Two-one all parties, parties on campus? Right. And the students, of course, booed me and say, but you dad, but you, what kind of president are you working for? Yeah. All this on the day before my birthday. <laughs> so I took blame for all the cancellations of parties. Now I was being accused of throwing a party. And once again, I'm in the a-hole mode, right? So when security busts in and say, but you throwing a party, I was like, but that's a Walter Chains party. No people. <laughs> Man. No DJ. Mm-hmm. No nothing. What party are you throwing? Mm. Honestly, I still remember. It's like, at that point, all my stress, it was like a snap on my head. I was like, this is the one time I know I'm not wrong. <laughs> right. There's no way this could get I am very wrong. sure. I am very sure. So they were trying to escort you off a of camp? They did. They escorted yeah. me out the sub, and I literally took my key out of my pocket, turned the key, and said, anyway, I can see you all later. They was like, we just tell you don't go back in the sub. I said, but it don't make sense, though. I have a key to the building. <laughs> like, I could come back, and also I leave my car keys. They didn't want to hear that. So they say, oh, you being this and that. So there was an altercation. And literally, I had 19 witnesses to say what really happened. And this is how much, but as a Christian God fan, man, 
we was at literally a conference for a Baptist church. My mom's car is where the 19 testimonies that would really happen. That night was. Why is it with a parking lot with a policeman circling all through the night, the only car that got broken was my mom's car that day? And mm. why is it the only thing that was stolen? This fox, but let me tell you this. The only thing that was ever stolen from a car was my 19 testimonies. That was already um, what the stump is by the JP. Um, um, this, the whatever it is. Yeah, right. Sealing the proof. The right now, so already the done, proof. waiting for my court case. I'm confident that the truth will come out. The one thing I had 19 testimonies God. and five of the people were people who were already on disciplinary actions who tell me live. But you remember, I can't even help you, but because security could vote my file. Mm-hmm. But the things I learned through that incident made me into the man I am. When I saw all these moving parts and how the world really is work, I never was aware of. I never knew this dark side of life. I was a Christian all my life, but mm. so going back to it, when I went back to the security, did I ever cuss that night? Yes. I'll admit it. I'm a Christian. The mm. one time I cussed that night was in a room with security when I was frustrated, telling them how tired I am of all this ass word, right? Mm-hmm. Everything I get accused of, I literally obeying everybody all day. I just got but from class yeah, and yeah, it's my pre-birthday. Right so I got my in so the library from this whole... That's because I was pushed. So when the security pushed me, I told them I'm going to go to the library and write a report to mm-hmm. send to your superiors. Mm-hmm. So only people who was in the library, which is a part of my testimonies, know that when I came in there, I was sitting by a computer typing. I was typing an angry letter, boy. Mm-hmm. And then I asked the students as their president, can I talk? And so I began to talk and I began to cool down and vent. And while I vent is when the security run up and on the you. police came. They and run they up escalated on you, it again. I had already calmed down, boy. Mm-hmm. I was telling speeches, Maya Angelo, Stephanie, how we need to stand up. And boy, a lot of these things we can solve ourselves. We don't even need COBUS, boy. We could become change. I was just talking. Mm-hmm. Literally being an inspirational speaker. Next thing you know, security there telling me they need to discard me. I asked them what I do. Well, you don't really do nothing. We just need you to come outside. I said, well, can I finish talking to the students? No, you bothering them. I asked the students, am I bothering you? Right. They said no. Yeah. So I continue talking. I could show you how much of the truth I could share this. I only share this story when I'm paid, but literally. Mm-hmm. QC paid me well, different people. When I'm paid to be an inspirational speaker on stage, going to prison, it's the only time I tell the truth. Mm-hmm. That was the most scary and embarrassing night of my life. Because I was being surrounded by policemen who were telling me I do something. I know I ain't do nothing, but... <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. hey. To make so it like I, literally, they telling me, but you acting like this, this out of your character, you must be drunk. I said, oh, oh my God, literally, and it started playing my mind on the recording. I said it. So, what y'all could tell people that I went with my girl and drank wine? This is why me and my girl fighting on. My girl was like, nigga, I ain't saw you that day. Mm. How my name getting the story? I said, I was talking about a scenario that I know they're going to do. I was telling y'all mm. what they're going to do. Mm. They could tell y'all I drunk to explain all this. At that time, I think that was the most radical point in my life. And I just felt like, Literally, I, I I went from this point of trying to get a master's PhD one day become smart. I feel like that moment changed you to it the did. artist. That's you... why I became an artist. I yeah, realized yeah. all this, even though I'm doing my master's now, all this, yeah. let me get smarter and let me articulate it, let me write. When you look at the changes of the world, the people who really make and change, they ain't doing all that. No, they, they just maintain in the they status just, quo. No, no, they just do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just do it. I, I give you news about example. As much as people want to talk about Kanye West, he did stuff. Nah. he has done stuff that resulted in changes whether good or bad he's mm. done stuff mm. even leadership styles right hitler was a leader his form of leadership style people don't like because of what it stands for but he still was able to lead yeah. thousands of people yeah. mm-hmm. he was a leader we don't talk about leadership style in him because people say no, no, no we can't. because the end product but think about subject. how effective his leadership was though yeah, his leadership style has been copied numerous times since then. It's just so I I you know. I was studying these stuff and learning. I was becoming smarter being from a dumb child who couldn't read to now appreciating knowledge. Mm-hmm. And at that night just became a click where um the next side of myself that I was neglecting. So I stopped drawing. I wasn't doing caricatures. I wasn't doing animation. I had given up on art to get smart and get a degree. Mm-hmm. And that night literally was the night where the persona of Wayne Head was born. Mm. literally wean head carried me for about six years in depression mm. the, that that became my shield so because how i think after this moment obviously your name sort of carries this stigma but how did you go about sort of rebranding 
into Wait, who you are. No. It's not good that the first thing that comes up when people go gig and AM is a court case. Firstly, <laughs> I mm, couldn't right. find a okay. job. Yeah. I couldn't find anything easy. Although I was not um, giving any of the charges. I didn't never get charged. None of my police record. Right. It's still factual that there was a public right. exercise mm-hmm. that anybody could find or they could recall or they could recognize me. So imagine going to Shell and Shagan because you don't know if you get this job. Me, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Super Confident, Cobus President, all these accolades, junior achievement, letters from the Governor General. You name it, I had it, right? And I couldn't even get a job at Shell. But Man, wow. So my my whole confidence went. And literally, it was only because of literal counsel. I had two counselors who I still work with to this day at UB who saved my life. And I met about five students who put light back in me. But I met students like how you bringing up how I met you. Mm. I met a girl on campus. And at this time, that's where the delusion of like love even started to get massive for me. I couldn't tell if somebody liked me, loved me, or what they didn't do. Because mm-hmm. everything just felt weird. But. Yeah. So I met a girl on campus who was just like, I tired of saying, like she stopped me one day. And I, when I say down, a part of my regulation is I couldn't stay on campus two hours after my class. I was security would have scored me off. I you talking about when you came back? Oh, when I came back me. after my suspension, yeah. I couldn't join a club. If I join the club, I'm suspended again. Um, if I'm seen on campus or at an event and security sees me and tell me to leave and I don't leave, I'm suspended again. If I'm too active on campus or in leadership position, I'm suspended again. My last semester when I got my highest GPA ever, which is the 3.8, is the most depression I have had in my life. Literally, one time I was in a class, my lawyer called and said this and that about my court case and say, okay, I know y'all pay us a bunch of money, but I figure it out. Just go up there and plead guilty. And I burst out mm-hmm. crying. I said, boy, we didn't give all this money on my savings. Mm-hmm. No, all this boy. Son. And all you're telling me is just all I had to do is plead boy. guilty and I would have been in a better position. Mm-hmm. Like this almost 10 months into my court case, but I was crying almost every day. Mm-hmm. I went through suicidal tendencies um, from my second day after coming from my court case. Because you got to remember, I got put with six charges. I got in, in court, in the courtroom. They open up the courtroom. It's like six o'clock at night. They already closed. They open it. To give me my six charges. Hold mm. on. So this event, I was. I, I went to actual court, but like, no, 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 no. Yeah. But when the night of this incident, I was thinking this happened like around nine, ten. It was a. It was about two days of occurred. Like it happened nine, ten o'clock. I went that night to the jail cell, right? Mm. At um, with that on the, the one whole, on uh, Blue Hill Road, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I yeah. stayed there for about two hours. A lot of politicians showed up. A lot of people question. A lot of my uncles was police. A lot of people showed up. But I stayed there. I have these marks on my hand to remind me. So I actually put my hand in piss that night. Mm. So in the video, you saw me holding on a piece of wire when they were dragging yeah. me. Yeah. That sliced my hand right here and here. So when I went to the jail cell, my stupid had never been in the jail. Didn't know he was going to touch things. So the guy was sitting. He was laying on the bench. So I couldn't be on the bench. I had to go on the floor. So I literally put my hand in piss for about 10 minutes. So this whole thing was infected the next day they had to get me to the hospital. Before yeah. my court case, when I got the charges, they had to get me to the hospital first. Mm-hmm. And also the police are very friendly. They gave me KFC. They cracked jokes with me. They made me feel like I ain't do nothing. Little did I know that there was this whole thing happening on the media, social media. My mom had done this uh, press conference, people mm-hmm. saying stuff. And there was a decision made that this boy have to get these charges. And I say boy because that's how I was treated. Mm-hmm. So all the smiling up, all the buying KFC cracking jokes with the police officers. I even saw one of my uncles say, hey, uncle, everything cool. He said, boy, you look like you're going to court. I said, yeah, but they say straight. He said, boy, you better find you a good lawyer. Man. And I was like, I wasn't catching on. I literally was still naive. I wasn't catching on that, boy, these dudes are on a path of ruining my life. Mm-hmm. And they don't see it. They don't see the leader. They don't see a potential artist. They don't see the guy who's a church, a Christian, all the life. All they're seeing it's troublemaker. Radical. You need he's, to go to prison. He's radical. But the reality, although I didn't get to go because I have a good fighting mother, my mommy fought. She literally found a lawyer who did us a favor and showed up. So I didn't have to go to Princess. So not Princess, to Fox Hill. Mm. Dude, my reality is that weekend, I was supposed to be in Fox Hill. Wow. Like, y'all take this little thing and say the resolution is let's put them around on a criminal. Yeah, but they didn't make that big for yeah. you. I remember that. Really. So <laughs> the funniest part is after I did it, only my friends showed up to the jail cell. I went back on campus on Monday to get my keys out the same office because the original reason why I was going in the sub is to get my keys for my car. Right. My car stayed at the weekend. And when I was going to get my keys after being let out the the, the jail cell, not the right. jail cell, after getting out the court, mm. doing all the stupidness. To this day, when people say, but why you wear your pants so loose or why you wear pajamas? It's because I still battling psychological damage. Mm. My uncle took my pants and rang it up and put my 
felt all the way up to my stomach. And I was like, all my life I was responsible and I never had to do this garbage. Right, he right. said, yeah, but you going before the court and they get paid a picture of you and you can't look like a So to this day, I wear my pants low. You know why? Mr. Rebellion. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For, all that stuff about jail and all that. No, I wear my pants low because I have freedom, boy. Mm. Why my uncle had to pull up my pants and say, here, take my belt. <laughs> to this day, I don't wear no belts, boy. Y'all got this. Because mm. I really ain't do nothing. Mm-hmm. But let me work on God's side, right? So no, <laughs> I just want a quick, yeah. quick question. Because basically in my, I just looking at myself being in that situation, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, I looking at myself in that situation. That would be my villain origin story. Like that would make me like that's go go to go dark. Like you <laughs> that's know. that's what it was, man. You know, um. Ed, like I say, that's my bot, man. Um, I traveled the world. I've been to six different states for free. Uh-huh. I competed internationally. I got accreditations. I have good business relationships. I work. I rework my whole persona. Man, I I noticed because I was watching from afar. Yeah, because it was like. When I saw you become an artist, you had started, to, like, you wasn't the primp and proper person I saw. It was like, I'm more an artist, free flowing. Exactly. I, you know. I wear pajamas and yeah. a red shirt. All yeah. of this is because I worked hard. Mm-hmm, it yeah. doesn't have anything to do with me being a PR of UB. I'm also supposed to be connecting with students. Mm-hmm. I also am a person who tells people, I even said it in Staff Beating recently, I think we are smart enough to convince politicians, as the University of Bahamas, that suits are the dumbest thing to wear in our culture. Yeah, if I Africa, didn't have that time and right? place. I don't know how <laughs> yeah. people didn't catch on it. I have no, no, no. Baby. Africa. Design <laughs> clothes <laughs> yeah. to suit their culture. Right. We are wearing suits. suits up. Yeah. Sweating, walking hot. from place to place. Hot. Why? <laughs> Colonialism, bro. Hot, hot, hot. So, that's, that's really what it is. So, I yeah. mean, I share my story and thank you for listening, but I share the story because it's my truth, boy. Like, yeah. I stay quiet and I smile and I crack those and I draw a character just because that's what I'm paid to do. That's what I need to do. Mm. But inside, like, I go to prison. I go to programs. It's me and um, the, the principal for PACE right now, we're working on a male-oriented program because the program is called Providing Access to Continued Education. It's never pregnancy girl school. So we're building a program to mentor the fathers of the girls. Right? Mm. The passion that God put in me, and he answered a prayer, I'll end with this. The prayer I prayed. No, I mean, we still got a couple of things. Oh, sorry. But yeah, yeah, go ahead. The prayer I prayed one of my nights when I was trying to hang in. I was hanging with my friends. Uh-huh. And I always talk about this on stage. I literally watch my friends walk. This is like right there by the police station on Bay Street. They walk into McDonald's. And in the parking lot, I had like two Anakin in my hand, right? Mm. But I fall back. And I literally remember falling in my knees, boy. And I cry. And I was like, God, I feel lost. And I did a prayer. And I break the two waters on the ground. And I was crying, and then my boy come and he's like, "But you okay?" I said, "Yeah, but yeah. it's like a moment in my life stop, and I address how lost I was as a Christian." Mm. And I believe he answered my prayer. I said, "I wanted to connect with males more. I want to understand what men going through. Mm. Do it. I can end with this." My cellmate tell me I cool, and if I wasn't cool, because I was a big dude, he was gonna stab me with these two rusty nails. Shanking then the, end, the crazy thing again, the back who's in the back of the cell over time. It's like. <laughs> Wait, yeah. that's where y'all put me, boy? No. <laughs> that's crazy. So, Wayne Head, because the story doesn't stop there, because it gets better mm-hmm. over time. So, you created Wayne Head, and this, because we no, can't don't, end don't, without- don't misconstrue it. All credit to where I am in my life goes to Mahana, my big cousin. Mm. I have two cousins who sadly got mixed up with the law. Our grandfather told me and them. Don't ever get your name mixed up. Don't get none on your record. My cousin, one advice is why I'm where I am. He said to me, while chilling, mm. <laughs> you really dumb. <laughs> you so busy trying to play their game and articulate what you want to say their way to learn how to read and communicate their way. You always sucked at that way. But <laughs> you have the ability to draw a kid's cartoon and tell oh, your story trait. your way. Right. And you won't waste time playing their game. And that's what my cousin said to me. That's deep, bro. That's, that's when that, we that, that, started. Yeah. I never had to talk. I don't have to talk no more, bro. I talk in like this because I don't talk about shit. Man. I really, I don't really trust people. I can be honest. I don't. No, I, I feel you. Like, right. you know, certain events through life and you see people swing narratives make you jaded. Yeah, bro. My job get- as PR, if somebody sees me 
walling out somewhere and they want to, they can record me and cost me lose mm-hmm. my job. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't trust people. The mm-hmm. one time I wild out on my birthday, I remember a lecturer saw me and he was like, boy, you was like the life of the party. You was having fun. And it's like, um, he wanted to record because he's like, you drunk or something? I said, no, bro. Then you had a jazz band show me out. He's like, yeah, why they was wondering all your requests? Do what I just come in everywhere and say. Man, I, I know that. And I know <laughs> that's one of the reasons why these dudes is how fun, but you right. ever be in the party with me? Hmm. Nah. And I over here at the Bahama where much people cannot afford. Mm-hmm. I am having fun, but mm-hmm. <laughs> my bill is always be $200. Wow. <laughs> Quick flex. Because <laughs> actually that remind me at night, um, I buck you there. And then like we was going in the barn yeah, that night. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. like Taz didn't get me. And he was like, bro, I get you stressed. Like, bro, I waiting for these girls to start it up. And then my other friends, he yeah, was like, like four girls. I mean, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. my other friend, he just come up. Oh, Justin, you trying to get in? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right come this way or whatever like you know um and there's a couple times i buck you inside there and like you know different occasions but i want to get to the caricatures and weigh in it because when i started seeing these i was like i want what's camera i get looking i want to say this on rack i mean you're looking this this one one. this was in plan (laughs) this was in plan i right i literally when i saw these in there i blush and i was like whoa because like really you see the drawings, but to see it framed and positioned intentionally, but it shows appreciation. So I want to say, but thank you all. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. No more. If I wanted to quit caricatures, I couldn't no more because yeah. of y'all. But thank you. No, because it's like, as soon as I got this, I'm like, yo, this is a piece of art. And I, I think immediately I put this in the frame from 2017. Mm-hmm. So when we had had a short dialogue, it was at Nod, which you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Man, I see this way making caricatures and this for free. I need to. Bro, I need That's to literally how he said it. He's like, wait, no charge? Hold on. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was working. I, I get like, one minute. Yeah, I get one. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, and when he was like, I say, like, wait. Yeah, this is a special year like, too, boy. This the year I got the world's fastest. That's why when I look at the style, that's the style I got me world's fastest. Wow. When I draw like that, I fast, but I could draw 30 people in five minutes. Boy. Yeah, 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 that's crazy. And then I was like, quick, for real. Cause you know how mine quick too. I remember that night. Yeah, yeah but now it was like so. But I said, you know, Han, that's already can't be doing this stuff. Yeah, I just have to get two massages every month. I can't be doing that. How much? What? Yeah, uh, I have. I had chronic back uh, spasms. Oh, mm-hmm. by the time I was twenty six, because of the posture. Like, if you ever see me with the new stuff, I have for caricatures. Yeah, everything is about posture. Even two of my artists. Um, when there was like twenty working for me, yeah. we worked two events. Christmas is our busiest, right? In total, we had like thirty events. After the second event, they started calling out, but they said, my back hurting and this and that. I was like, but y'all young, but let's go. Mm-hmm. And literally, I had to go to every event, draw twice as fast because people paying for a certain amount of drawings. Yeah. And I told my artists couldn't make it. And they're young people. Mm-hmm. Jamaro, my good friend, he's cracked jokes about that. Like, it's the next up and coming artist. Uh, I keep forgetting the same. I think it's Terrell. Mm-hmm. I always did see him. I always see his work. Guy is talented. I think he's going to be definitely better than me, uh, if not already better than me. His character just style is dynamic. I hope he goes off to compete, right? But like the same way how Jamal passed the torch to me mm-hmm. and tell me some truths, I do that to people too. Mm-hmm. Should you continue doing characters if you love it? Yes. Should you make sure you have the good posture? Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> your back will hurt. Mm. Yeah, so, so you don't wear a brace now? Or? I do. Okay, if I have yeah. a long event, um, especially if I wear a suit or if I had Atlantis because of the walk, you got to accumulate all the stuff. So yeah, my the price walking, right now, the, toting, the-, the price that I charge people is because I have that experience to say why I need to get paid this price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you tell me I go on over Atlantis to draw three hours, that's three seventy five an hour. Wow. And mm. people just be like, why so much? First of all, I need parking, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Second of all, I have to pay for my assistant to bring mm-hmm. my stuff. Because mm-hmm. if I walk in and the average walk to the event is like 10, 15 minutes right. yeah. with all that heavy stuff, that's, mm-hmm. a, load on your that's a load on my shoulder, a load yeah. on my arm. By the time I get ready, the first thing you get here is crack, crack, crack. Right. And sometimes when you come, they just tell you the wrong time. It's time to start drawing. I even had no time to warm up. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So I got to think about all that. Um, assistance are necessary because while I draw, sometimes I need water. Mm-hmm. So while I draw tonight, the line get long. I need somebody else to facilitate that because when I have to facilitate that, that slows me down. Yeah, you see, it's a lot to the tricks. Um, mm-hmm. after the facilitation and after the water, what else does the assistant do? Make sure the client paying, boy. Yeah. The assistant, I tell them that hey, mm-hmm. hey, reach out to the client, tell them we about to be done. Make sure we secure our payment. One time I had a client who was paying me by um credit card. This is a big event over Atlanta. It's a private event, and you know, even on my resume, I never say, oh, I worked. For Atlanta, so for Bahama, I actually meet the owners of Yamaha and all these different people. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I can tell you stories about meeting them and being like, you know, I get tip from some of them, 
But the moment where it was like, you got something that's going to blow this world apart is what really I cherish. Because mm-hmm. I remember one time I went to shutdown, I was tired. Me and my boy Willard was there. And there was this one more couple was there, right? I gave you two stories, but Willard. Two funny mm-hmm. stories. Go ahead, one, man. The mm-hmm. first one is like, we had to draw this people and me and Willard was tired, dog. We talking about endless lines. We hired <sighs> six people for the event. Six corners of the Atlantis Conference Center, right? But we the senior artists. So once they started noticing that we could draw, <laughs> our lines long. I like take a second, I walk around, but I say one second, I run around. And the next artist, right? Some of them went to see and I'm bucking them again. But they end up nobody on their line because they're stalling and get all they too slow. Mm. And it's like, yeah, they're getting paid. They still could get paid. Right. The yeah. standard um at that time was $75 an hour. Mm. Um, I ain't talked to Willard, but he, the standard has to be because of COVID, $125 an hour. And you're taking the testing and all this stuff. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, they still got paid. But at the same time, we did more work. Right. Yeah. So now we have these final people come. Imagine, just think a random Caucasian family come. Oh, we know you're all parking up. But can you just do one more? And literally, Willard and I am God friends. Something in us say, boy, draw this last one, right? So we sit down. We knock them out. I tired. The client didn't pay me, but the client sent in a note saying, we already paid you. Stop bunging us. I like crying. I was like, dog. Well, no, that's the second story. Anyway. Yeah. The end of the first story is that when I went to Atlantis the next day, I was working for conference services. Mm-hmm. That client spoke very highly of us. Mm-hmm. And they talked about how they saw that we were tired and we still went on our way to draw as children and they loved the drawings. The style I was doing even back then, I'm not proud of. Like a lot of my, when I look at my old work because of where I am now and what I learned, I appreciate it. Like I appreciate this, but I can like look at this and feel like, you could do way better. It's five years ago. Yeah, right. bro, it's, way better. This is literally right. five years ago. Bro. Yeah, that was like, <laughs> that was like rushy, rushy stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like this. This is more recent, right? Yeah, that one more like recent. That's 19. Yeah, so when I look yeah. at this, this one, I like, if anybody look at my style now, I embrace it and exaggerate. I try to mm-hmm. slowly introduce Bayman's to the idea that exaggeration is cool. Right. Mm-hmm. Because everybody's stuck on cookie cutter, which is mm-hmm. Jamal's style, right? Man. Portrait face, cartoon body. No, you cheating. You mm-hmm. made me draw a portrait of your face mm-hmm. for $10. Hmm. Yeah. and then just the cartoon body so you can make me feel good. no mm-hmm. that's a portrait of your face it's a right. portrait price right yeah yeah you know so um the second story is one time i was working at an event and at this point me and willard don't work together no more because we have different pricing mm. so my price is 175 an hour um willard in the site mm. so i i invited him to one of my events where he gets paid more so the client said they'll meet me at the event to pay me right so willard is an older looking guy i'm young so the client so they think was he's on, the boss. They thought he was me. Right. So oh. they gave Willard like eight hundred dollars that night, right? And <sighs> Willard called me the next morning, but he ran. I just want to say, but it's a pleasure to work with you, boy. <laughs> if you ever need me again, but let me know, right? <laughs> so this time I on the next night round with the client. I say one second, but yeah, I round. Let me click say. <laughs> Who you give the money to last night? It's <laughs> like we give it to the ball headed man with the the space in his teeth. And the head. I said, okay, yeah, okay. He works for the company. I want to apologize. I start apologizing. This and that. It is pleasure mm-hmm. made them laugh. Hang up. I say, Willard, <laughs> <laughs> last night you talk about getting a tip. How much that tip was, boy? <laughs> boy, they tipped me good, boy. Oh, man. They gave me so much. I say, boy, what if you don't break my money? <laughs> like, literally, boy, but that's my Bruh. boy. That's mm. my boy. And I think, um, you know, if anything, anybody listens, don't take all that negative. When I right, go back right. to that place to yeah. talk about that incident, that's because that happened, bro. No, that knows. Yeah, that happened. Like, bro. people just be like, oh, you shouldn't say it like that. And this. No, no, no. no. You forget wasn't them. there, bro. No, forget you, them, bro. Yeah. Do you forget know them, that? I, I never even get in trouble in sock. Yeah. One time I get in trouble was in grade seven for selling fake tickets. Mm-hmm. I pimp out everybody. <laughs> my boy, my, my boy, that's me. So I had a reunion and mm-hmm. he just said, but how much he did hate me, boy. Yeah. He's like, boy. Everybody stay quiet. We ain't know who do the stickers. When I come in there, ah, he do it, he do it, he do it. He give me the ticket. He tell me this is real, but I pimp on everybody. But I say, I got to go to church on Sunday. But y'all think it's set me up to go to hell. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah. So all in all, when it comes to the persona, Wayne, it was my shield Um, around after I won the accolade of world's fastest. It started to click on me. I couldn't. I was drawn out of anger for years. I was using the anger from that situation. Oh, I get so relate to and that. And like, to do these drawings. And every time uh, somebody healing me, every time I get likes, internally I was like, that's right. You all tell me I was supposed to go to jail. That's right. I mm-hmm. supposed to be like this and that. Right. right? The funniest part about it, and I'll admit it, because, you know, as a grown man, mm-hmm. I wasn't smoking and I wasn't drinking. I definitely wasn't having sex at that incident. I was still a virgin. Mm-hmm. How are you talking about when you made this? 
No, when I got in trouble with you, oh, okay, yeah. okay. So when I got in trouble, you know what it is to be a virgin who ain't even never smoked weed. You just barely a string. Uh, can't even right. hold your alcohol. And then they're accusing you of being drunk. And, and then to make it worse for two years, every time I went out to get a drink, everybody was like, oh, hey, hey, you don't you, get too much of them, boy. <laughs> no, don't, so I never could have even enjoyed uh, my feet, mm. I hate people. <laughs> like, but people. I, could tell, I could tell you about uh, real drunk nights. Uh, my close friends know, but one in particular, when my boy Adrian changed yeah. my life, dog. Adrian, this the funny part is this all happened one year before I got hired from Atlanta. Okay. So I went out with some friends who I claim is my friends, right? They using my car, but I getting a little drunk. Do you know we went over at Nana's step party? It's like three o'clock in the morning. Y'all remember pre-COVID, right? Yeah. Three o'clock yeah. in the morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. drive in my car, they take my keys, lock me on the car this time I drunk. Mm-hmm. So I tip tea and all this. I don't know where to go. I see a light pole. I said, let me just sleep here so at least they can find me, right? If you know about Atlantis, there's a place where all the buses is come. Yeah, you're talking about yeah. by the terminal. By the terminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there for like two hours, pissed drunk, sleep underneath the pool. Mm. Real talk, dog. I was there, pissed drunk, sleep underneath the pool. That's how depressed it was. And my friends was inside partying and getting girls. And I had uh, a girl in my life, and a couple other people keep telling me, but these ain't your friends, but. Mm. And Adrian is one of those people. Adrian, literally, he was knocking off Madonna's. And this is a part of, like, y'all talk about drunk nights that, oh, I was drunk that night. I wasn't drunk that night. After the incident is when I started drinking. I was mm. depressed, boy. Wow. Mm. Wayne had started because I was getting um, $5 and $10 tips for doing caricatures on Facebook. And as people come to my house to get their drawing, they give me $5, $10. I went and gave them money and I bought alcohol, boy. Mm. Mm. It was so bad. My mom and my dad one morning was telling me they got to go. My mommy pushed open the door and she had clink, 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 clink. And that's mm. when it clicked to me. I was like, but it's a lot of money. Like, you know, the accounting part yeah, of me come out. Right, it's right. a lot of money. Boy. Like, I spent a lot of money drinking. But I used to walk to my house, go to the, every liquor store inside um, inside the area mm. for Carl Arbor and come back to my house and drink. I was drinking myself to death, but... <laughs> No, bro, I get re- so, but so much of this stuff I can relate to. So, uh, Karina Rich. Yeah, but funny. I don't know if anybody can remember that. And all the accolades I get over um, Atlantis, all the awards. Yeah, I'll admit it. I was a drunk underneath a light post, and my boy saved my life. Mm. He was passing by. He said, but this looked like me, right? But he didn't know. Mm-hmm. When he come back, imagine he slouch up against the pole like this, but he looking mm. like a freaking bum, boy. Mm. Right. And he come in the car, and he's like, but come in this car, boy. He drive me around for two hours, talk rough to me, say, get out this place, but what happened to you, this and that. And only him and like two other of my friends know how the press that one night, but mm-hmm. had me, but like, I honestly could cry about it. Was, wow. And, mm-hmm. you know, it mm-hmm. just was like people wasn't taking out seriously. I was going to kill myself. But, mm-hmm. So it's like literally he saved my life. Um, get everything about together. Started believing in art, investor going off to the conference. So when I went off to my first conference, that blew my mind. So the reason why I went off to the conference is my counselor said, because even my counselors was sad at who I had become. Mm-hmm. My Every counselor I went to, I probably knew. Right. So literally it was like they watching this dude who was doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Now this, the shadow of himself, dog. Mm-hmm. And you can't counsel him out of it because he actually going through this. Mm-hmm. So... The advice, um, I think it was Camille Smith, actually. She told me, go back to what God gave you, boy. Like, forget all this knowledge. Forget all this books. What God gave you from day one. And that ended up being drawing. And that's when I started drawing to get out the depression. That's when I started using caricatures as art therapy. That's why I even knew Norm, the sip and paint. As well as like, yeah, you know me and we ain't no sip and paint. You don't come there and get mm. drunk with us. You don't come mm-hmm. there and, oh, don't learn art. You come in there, you can learn art. You could have a good time. You could laugh. You could learn about the enjoyment. Like anytime in the series, when we doing, I, I call them, we doing a show, dog. I tell them, even the artists we're working with, this is a show. From the second these people come here, we are performing because we got to change lives. Cool, what happened? Mm-hmm. When you come to our show, you can't leave the same. Mm-hmm. You could do this painting, but there's a point in the painting where the music playing and you painting and nobody touching their phone. That moment is what we're aiming for. Right. Psychologically, mm-hmm. it's called flow. It's positive psychology mm-hmm. between boredom and anxiety. Flow, boy, you in the flow. Like basketball, you in the flow. You in yeah. the groove. Right. Mm-hmm. When people hit that, and he's bringing up at the end, anybody else realize for 30 minutes nobody pick up their phone? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh my goodness, for real. Right. Like people going over their paint and they're adjusting colors. 
And then, you know, they round us. Why you don't do the stand up? Why you want to outline it? <laughs> because the same kindergarten, you was an adult. Mm -hmm. So we teaching them true sipping bank. Same thing with characters. We teaching them how to heal. Whenever I do my course, I don't want you to be the best artist. Remember, this is a show. If you can't draw good, be good at customer service. Mm -hmm. If you good at customer service, suck a draw. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you find a balance, then you're me, right? Right. But the whole thing, like, even New Norm was supposed to be, because it ain't never um, Lavandria Lyric, a.k.a. Lyric, right? The yeah. singer. Elvandria role. Mm -hmm. What New Norm was supposed to be was this collaboration of artists mm -hmm. controlling their clients. So not saying control, control, but right, right. if I have 400 followers, I have 400 people who can show up to the event. Mm -hmm. If I charge in $10 at the door, I should leave with how much money? $4,000. Yeah, yeah. $4, I trying to teach other artists what I already learned. So the first event we showed with Soy Boy, shout out to Soy Boy, right? He let us premiere a show before everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we fill up the room. 60 people showed up. And I showed that. I said, boy, literally saw you, told me, and sorry, don't beat me up for this. <laughs> he literally told me the night before, but I ain't promoting this, boy. Ain't nobody messing with this show. I ain't even bring it. Like, I gave him, like, 20 free tickets to give this family. Say, so, these, these people ain't on my run, boy. Like, he was in a bad place. Yeah, because he sort of haven't had an arc like that right. recently, too. So, you know. And literally, I, like, reach out to him. I wouldn't say we boys, boys, but we know each other. And mm -hmm. I was like, but sorry, I see you. And it's not. I did a show back then, too, called Creative Leadership. Mm -hmm. So I actually was reaching out. I learned. I knew about Julian Believe Wines before months. Yeah, almost felt yeah, I know yeah. about it, too. Because, yeah. like, you know, I worked with him. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. I was talking to Dasque. I was talking to people, and I was letting them tell their story for audiences to learn. Mm -hmm. right. And I had about 10 people who actually was tuning in. Who's like, wait, bring the show back, wait, because mm -hmm. everything that's Quay declared on that show is what he did. Everything that Sawyer and Julie and them declared, they did. Right. So it's like, there's like creators were sharing the process before it happened, and that was beautiful. Right. And you're doing the same thing here, too, but good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my whole thing was when I talked to Sawyer, and he was like, but I ain't really care. I think in Sawyer could pull us waiting. We fill up the room. So I was mm -hmm. like, no, but I ain't doing nothing. So I went into my marketing mind. I did a promotion. I created platinum, mm -hmm. silver ticket system. I made people feel special. They fill up the room. And I did it once. I only did it once because I tell every other person in the team, if it's your event, right, and i given you all the door, how you expect me to push for you to get money and I get nothing? I mean, no sense. Right. You push, bring your crowd. Mm -hmm. And event after event, the numbers started decreasing. You know, to be honest, a lot of people who I work with, not saying anything wrong with the event or the people, mm -hmm. but it just wasn't pulling the same numbers. Mm -hmm. So it came to a point where I invested like 10000 in New Norm. I break even. But it, like that's ten thousand dollars I invested in the other artists to learn that everybody want this whole my price is this and if I ain't get my price I ain't coming out and I trying to humble some artists to be like boy these people these Bahamian people made some us but I ain't gonna never turn my back on Bahamians boy Bahamians are the ones who saved me on my depression I like anybody who come to me they be like boy how much your character just is this now oh seventy five sixty five reasonable mm -hmm. if it's a tourist three hundred. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I only can see you once in my life. Thing. There's thing. a process mm -hmm. for me coming to you. I got to get my hair cut. Mm -hmm. You got to put gas in. There's a process. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? But for my behemoths, but I know if I, I meet average people who just want free drawings and real story, right? I think I'm running on a little bit too long, but. <laughs> yeah, we were to wrap after. Yeah, yeah. But I recently yeah. met a person who I did the event for their, their daughter's caricature event, right? Uh -huh. For their daughter, right? And mid experience, I get my call for my master's, my interview. Mm -hmm. And I literally looked at her and I told her it might happen, right? So they called and I was like, mom, I know I still have more drawings to do, but I really need to do this interview because my master's start next week. So I go on and do the interview. It ended up taking an hour, hour and a half. And I come back and I see this girl, right? No, no. I went for 45 minutes mm -hmm. and they never locked into the zone. So at this point, I oh. feel like, oh, okay, yeah, 45 yeah. minutes and me finish this job, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah. second I sit down, there's one girl who wanted to get drawn all day. And I believe in never leaving the one, right? So I started drawing. I said, enough. I said, yeah, we can get to drawing. Don't worry about the masters. And my mom is like, screw this. God ain't want this for me. Right, the right. second I started drawing the little girl, they call me and say, okay, the room open. They apologize and all that. So mm -hmm. now I got into the masters and I went to the client. She said, she's satisfied with what I do. But I tell her, no. No, that one little girl in that chair who wanted to get draw and I let her down, that on my mind. Right. So I do 20 people for free. Just mm. like that. Nice. I just wow. knock them out. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> that's so, so amazing. I, um, no, I, you. that's what people missing with. No, like, I always yeah. talk about, I just talked to um, Ruckus about that this morning, about people being selfish and not with the communal yeah, thing and coming together, you, like, you know. 
and I'm a runner. I think did I touch every night? <laughs> yeah, you I mean, touch every day. I mean, yeah, look yeah, at man. the less play. <laughs> I, I mean, don't tell <laughs> everything get discovered. <laughs> <laughs> I look that's, at the less. That's, okay, I mean, I said no, my birthday. Only thing is my <laughs> February. <laughs> February. Yeah, you did say your birthday. I said my birthday. My yeah. birthday is Aquarius. <laughs> but that's but that's, that's a team. I mean, it's like way I hungry. I mean, you sort of covered. I mean, yeah, all about it. Like I, I, if I could, last right? than a minute. But yeah. hungry Doctors. is a part of my rehabilitation too. Okay. I was not a good big brother. Um, I wasn't jacking for my little sister. She's living her own life. I was in my own life, and I realized after the incident, after my depression, I wasn't caring for my little sister. So I started caring out for lunch, and then we started recording because mm-hmm. I always get to see. And if you don't know, I'll check out Life of EAC. I saw my sister where she is now before she even saw it. Mm. She is always this like calculator. She went off to college, study account, you know, born life, right? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> she wasn't given into her creative side. My sister's funny, boy. Mm. Like hella funny, inspirational. Even with life, like, when I used to work with them, I used to let my sister teach classes. And she's like, why are you always been it? Because I saw it, but I saw where she is now mm-hmm. and people loving her for who she is. But she always had this thing where she didn't have that confidence. So I had to let her have a time to grow and literally at the cusp of COVID, she launched a YouTube page and a year and a half later, she is monetized and she's getting paid. Wow. Just wow. Right. Yeah, I seen some stick, of videos. She stick with it and literally behind the scenes. That's what Boy Hungry is. Me being a better, bigger brother. I was not a good big brother. Um, my sister, I could tell you at one point in my life, came to me and showed me love. And she said, you is a hoe. Mm. You is a hoe. Mm. Keep all these dirty bungies out this freaking house. Oh, like my sister, <laughs> get on me. Mm-hmm. And my sister, though she is younger than me, I could say I don't feel it from grade two with my learning disability. That's a secret I can end with. Mm. Guess how I used to pass English, but my you? sister mm. in grade two used to read over my grade seven papers wow. and correct it. I would not have finished school if my sister would wasn't helping me in English. Wow. That's it. That's my truth. That's See his you truth. Next time here on Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you again, Rimbra, for coming on and sharing your whole entire story. You know, I feel like yeah, wait, it's so I much. I might die tomorrow, so at least you have something you can sell. You know, yeah, I was, I was <laughs> more, knock on wood. So yeah, but well, that's a good story. We thank y'all for joining us on our audio adventure. You could see all of Rimbra's link below. Obviously, we cut clips, share it, and tune in. You know. Follow Rember and all the socials. Uh, Wayne. Oh, don't Ed. follow me. <laughs> Either yeah, way. Right. <laughs> yeah. I ain't TikTok. Are you on TikTok? Yet? I on TikTok. Oh, okay. I'm not on TikTok. I post some pictures. You know what you see that? <laughs> Where the moves? <laughs> That's fancy, but. Yeah. All right. We can see y'all later. Yeah, you see.